sure we'd assume that. Uh, so in the construction others. of the differential closure, um, you can always find them, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you find them, as long as your um, so you constants are algebraically closed, mm -hmm. then because we have, uh, because it's a basis, we can find constants somewhere right. that witness it. But that somewhere actually is the differential closure. Mm -hmm. So oh, okay. they all live in the differential okay. closure. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. But is it independent of the embedding? Is what independent? <laughs> if you embed the Carbesio extension in different ways into the differential closure, Oh, yeah. So they'll be conjugate by automorphisms. But, the they'll fix, you don't move but if they fix the constants, then it's unique, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what yeah. if you change differential closures? Um, to this one and then that one, because there are infinitely many, perhaps. If you change differential, but I mean, assuming that the constants of f are algebraically closed, th then they'll be fixed. Oh, okay. uh, well, wait, no, no, no. no. Uh, they won't okay. be fixed. It'll just. Uh, we can decompose it in terms of the change of where alpha goes, oh, okay. and then the constants will stay the same. Okay. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So it, a priori, it could change depending on how you how you present the differential closure. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, so so the uh, using y being the constant here uh, all of the differential closure. So so this setting yeah. would just work. Uh, it was at least the strong normal extensions then. Right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, and I mean, I, I guess you, I could just write out really quickly like how we see that that this corresponds in the Picard Bessio case to what we mm -hmm. wanted. So if here, if we take x equals zl, um, I guess uh, y equals c, um, and the theory that we're working in, by the way, is DCF zero one. Right, and so that means that all the uh, we name all the elements of f as constants, which means that they have to be fixed by morphism, right? And I guess we're assuming that c f equals c f out. Um, so why are the constants? And when you mean constants, just so there's no confusion, it doesn't mean constants in the differential sense, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, I should, yeah. But they're model symbols. Oh, the elements that are model <laughs> theorists. <laughs> yeah. Parameters. Yeah. Parameters, yes. And then M will be a hat. Right. And so in this case, if we just write down ot, um, ot x m over y m, well, that's the same thing as, um, so it's going to be sigma restricted to ZL um, such that sigma is in ot f hat over c f hat. But now, how are these determined? It's, these are, we can think of them as just, um, um, we can think of them as uh, alpha going to sigma alpha. Right, um, such that sigma is in um, on f hat over cf hat, but we're fixing f. And so then, because we know it's determined by where it sends alpha, um, this is just the automorphisms of our Picard Bessio extension um, f alpha over f. So this is a direct generalization of what we had just done, just by plugging in all these symbols. So um, yeah. So this is the general model theoretic setting. And now we can define the analogs of um, the sort of parameterization so, that so occurred. What, yes. What is called the internality and what is called the uh, binding rule? I'm going to get to that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought you so, had yeah, got there. No, no, no. <laughs> so a definition. So under we're going to work in this model theory setting. Um, so T, um, or sorry. So X is internal to Y provided Uh, one, there exists 
a U um, from uh, y to the n times x to the m to x, definable. So it's a definable function <coughs> such that there exists um, some x0 inside x to the m, making the map u sub x0, which is just u of where we plug in x0 for the first coordinate, um, making this function surjective. So all this is is just saying that uh, we can uh, parameterize um, x. So, so given this point x0, which plays the role of a fundamental system of solutions, we can express everything in x in terms of some tuple in y, definably. Yeah. So, so this is the, the sort of generalization of the, um, of the scenario that we were in in the picard Picard case. Now, why are we demanding that we have a two-place relation, or a two-place function? Because, like the picard Vesio case, we're trying to, in order to understand the, this automorphism group, we need to understand how fundamental systems um, get mapped to each other, right? Well, the way that we do that is by allowing ourselves to compose in order to find the group law. And so we build in y to the n times x to the m just so that we can compose. So um, this is a, a reasonably weak definition of internality. Basically, it's just that you have, um, you have some parameterization of x in terms of y, perhaps depending on some point in x. Well, it's not really parameterization because it's multiple to one. It's just surjective. Ah, uh, sure, a covering then, yeah. Um, Are you sure you want to go the, the last thing is x here, not, not x to the m? Yes. So note that if we have such a u... Then of course you can make it into u to the m. Then we can make it into yeah, yeah, u, to by, by, by u to the m. Yeah. And so that's, that's what we'll do, is just mimic what we did in the picard SEO case. Right? And so now... Um, oh, so one thing um, that's worth pointing out is that... Um, there can be many different um, functions witnessing internality. This function u is not even close to unique, right? So I mean, for instance, in the Picard SEO case, um, we could still have uh, we could still be using c to, c to the n cross z l to the m to z l, um, and we could make our function something like u c bar x bar equals sum two c i x i. Right, still witnesses internality. Or we can make it something like d to the n plus one cross um, x, or zl to the n plus one, and so we'll do ci x to the i. We'll just have some kernel, some extra stuff. But then at the, when we look at the type of the fundamental system, mm -hmm. then, then all that extra stuff doesn't matter because it'll still precisely control the automorphisms. Um, and what happens is that we'll have to look at some quotient mm -hmm. to get our group, but right. everything will still work out. Yeah. Uh, could I have a little bit of history? When is internality concept first come about? I think um, it started with the work of Zilber in, I think, the 80s or early 90s. In what, con in what context? Yeah. Um, was this in the context of Zariski geometries running? Do you no, know? No, it's well before that. Yeah. Oh, before this? Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe it's probably before. Oh, wait. It's probably was Shusky, this, actually. Was this to, to study just groups in stable in omega stable yeah, theories. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably Hushovsky's work on huh. groups of omega stable theories yeah. at some point, or what are the stable groups in general? Yeah. Um, and so the, the context was not to understand Galois theory. The context was to try to, as far as I know, the context was to study what kinds of groups can arise in the definable setting, in particular whether you can have non-finite groups arise, right? Because there are some theories for which you only have finite groups. Yeah. Speaking of that, yeah. are there any conditions on the fibers of 
U sub X naught? No, no, because when we um, define our group, um, we're going to take a certain quotient of Y right. mm -hmm. and to get rid of any of the fiber conditions. Right. Oh. Right. So in the case of um, picard Bessio, well, our fibers were all just size one. And so we didn't have to take a quotient because the function was injective. But um, under more exotic choices of U, you can uh, run into more trouble. But you just quotient by uh, the obvious equivalence relation to reduce everything to size one. Oh, okay. And the original, in DCF 0M, for example, the uh, varieties can be um, infinite dimensional. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just so in the finite dimensional the, setting here. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is a very general, flexible definition yeah. of internality, yeah. and it will actually be sufficient to get a definable group, just having this data. And so, now associated to this data x, y, u, x naught, we can associate to it a binding group which I'll we'll call bind x, y, u, x, y. And this binding group will be such that its endpoints can be canonically, or can be identified with um, the automorphism, this relative automorphism group. And then whatever structure, whatever geometric structure this has will be the structure we induce on this automorphism group. Now, um, I should say that um, the choice of um, u and x naught uh, does not matter. Um, it's only x and y that matter in this context. And when we get to, um, to studying uh, Pelley's Galois theory, it really will only depend on uh, the choice of generator for a certain uh, uh, differential field extension. Um, so, um, and the argument that you, it doesn't matter, depend on u or x naught, it's essentially just this triangle that we drew earlier. So, but we want to use u and x naught to define the group operation to make sure that everything works. Because u and x naught provide the glue between x and y. So, in my terms, I would think of this as being functorial at x and y. Um, let's see. What category? Yeah, what? Well, that's not. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, you know, that, that I mean, I can, if I have maps from x to x prime and y to y prime, which are given. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah. so, for, example, so for, for example, if you choose yeah. yeah. your exactly. category to yeah. have definable so, bijections. Once you start talking about the functors, then the answer is yes. Yeah. Definable yeah. functors. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But that's so why I'm trying to define a No, no, I want to allow just maps. Composable maps. It won't be. I mean, well, you're going to certainly. Well, I, do, I don't think so because then you, the functions won't witness, uh, won't be definable, right? I mean, if we just take some random permutation of x and y, mm -hmm. enough to to screw up what no, u is. No, no, definable functions. Definable. Oh, oh, just definable. Definable, uh, definable uh, but maybe not. Wait, uh, I probably will willing to make them compatible with the internet. Oh, right? then yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as you're fixing the data, you have to. Yeah. I mean, the, the things you can yeah. fix mm -hmm. stay fixed. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, so if we have x to x prime, y to y prime, such that, um, and we have some u prime. That, u. What is it? Yeah, if we have a compatible system like that, I guess that maps uh, x0 to x0 prime, then yes. Yeah, and everything's definable, then yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be functorial in that regard. Okay. Are there any examples of the Galois theoretic? Um, intuition in this, or the, or the applications to Galois theory, or the interpretations of Galois theory. Are there any that aren't from the classical culture and strongly normal theory? Uh, for intuitions, what do you mean by? I mean, uh, internality, how, how was it inspired and how does it apply? Uh, so I think the. I think the, I understand from what the early, what you said earlier how it was inspired, but yes. what, does it apply to more general differential Ga extensions? Yeah, uh, Galois theories. Yeah. yeah so, um, for example, the parametrized theory, oh, yeah. uh, which is oh, dimensional. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess Ronnie. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I mean, oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. in fact, and I mean, so what we can 
Um, the result I want to talk about a little bit in the afternoon session, um, I mean, I think I'll only have time to state it, but is that um, when we define um, Pillay's generalized strongly normal extensions, right. all the finite dimensional ones come from um, generalized logarithmic differential equations. Mm -hmm. But Where, what about, oh, so then what about the parameterized theory don't come from that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. Not, not exactly. Like, not exactly. Yeah. And are there any non galois theoretic interpretations of internality and binding groups? Um, not, uh, not. Can you repeat it? Um, no. If you get, if, <laughs> if we were to ask for examples, would they all be galois theoretic? No. Yeah. You're just talking about group theory. That, that's when you, when they started. Uh, no, it started from the inspiration um, of the Galois theory. No, no, no. That was why I, when I when I asked the I uh, historic Silver question. Was, oh, so no, maybe Silver maybe, was, uh, maybe yeah. to dovetail with both of your guys' questions, both your historic questions and your yeah. recent questions. Um, yeah, we we talked about this. Was initially <laughs> the the inspiration comes from Colchin, the earliest model theoretic mm -hmm. work on mm -hmm. this is Omega stable. Mm -hmm. But currently, right. what is the what is the best model, the, the widest model theoretic context in which we can do this? Uh, right. Yeah. Well, super, super stable plus stable, uh, super uh, super simple plus yeah. stable embeddedness. I mean, yeah. the binary group yeah. is actually yeah. defiable at any theory if you let if you allow indefinability, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, sure. So <laughs> <you can> actually, <laughs> it's anywhere, as long as you don't really care about the what okay, you okay, 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 okay. In first order. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But in first order, anything that is super simple with mm -hmm. the the something or rather being stable the embedded, the base, yeah. the yeah. wide yeah. stable yeah. embedded. You want, yeah, you, yeah, you want, want the wide embedded, right? Yeah. 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 So for example, you can do this with different cell No, 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 no. It doesn't. No. Oh, okay. And you could do differential, difference differential. So you do difference. Oh, okay. Yes. But you're always in Galois theory. It depends. Oh. A lot of the times, you, a lot of the applications right. are that they want right. to understand right. 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 Yeah. the yeah. definable structure on X. Well, but he, but he's constructing it so that and it somehow be, the an interesting internality the, tells you that there is a loop. Well, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, another mm -hmm. another so, name for so this binding group business. The almost, is uh, various group existence uh, theory. The example he gave. Where you start with very is, combinatorial well, model theoretic assumptions and pull a group out of it. But I was thinking more of uh, if you have stable arbitrary stable actions, definable oh, actions, no, no. of differential algebraic groups on course, just varieties yes. where there's no Galois no, no. theory. Sure, oh, there is um, a differential uh, group cohomology, mm -hmm. and you can classify oh, okay. forms of differential varieties in terms of this cohomology. Oh, okay. So yeah, so, so yeah, there is a, yeah, 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 yeah. So there, there is a cohomology theory that gives you this geometric information for okay. actions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, I, wait, what time does the, is it at 11.45? Uh, five more minutes. Oh, five more minutes, okay. So, um. 10 more minutes. 10, oh, all right, okay, sorry. <laughs> my, my watch is fast. Let's yeah. see. Okay, so okay. I guess to, so that we can have enough time to talk about the differential Galois theory um, so in the afternoon. Should be there um, and then we can just briefly um, go through what uh, has to happen here. So um, the same so, idea um, that worked in the picard bessier setting is that given um, this uh, specified x naught, we can look at its type. And again, that will correspond precisely to this automorphism yeah. group. So um, the so type it's of x naught over, yeah. I guess, yeah. So the type of x naught over ym will correspond to this automorphism group, x, x, y over m over ym. So now there's. Um, some technical details that you have to worry about. So the reason we wanted to assume that we had unique prime models is because um, uh, we want to know, I mean, for technical reasons, you want to know that the prime model over nothing is the same thing as the prime model over the endpoints of y. And this, I think, uh, certainly oh, okay. totally transcendental theories is enough. But you just have to worry that if you so we have nothing, and then we have our different closure or something. But then if I pick some subset here, I want to know that when I do the differential closure, um, or when I construct the differential closure, I get the same thing. And uh, being totally transcendental 
is good enough for that. Um, but that, that's sort of an aside. Um, and then, again, um, in the prime model, uh, this will again be isolated. And we look at the set of fund of x naught. Now, um, by the, the same token, we are going to print using u. We can construct another u hat from some sufficiently high power of y and go from fund x naught to fund x naught. And then define the big group in the way. But here, um, so our goal is to define group structure on y. Well, it can't be just all of ym, because as Phyllis pointed out, we can have lots of fibers. Yeah. But on y to the m modulo, the fiber equivalence relation on u hat. Um, could you change the m to n? No, or if you really want m here, y to no, the m? Different. Uh, so yeah, yeah. m will be some, so depending on the length of x zero, oh, oh, okay. I guess it's it'll be n times m. Ah, so, okay. All right. Yeah, so y to the n times n modulo the fiber equivalence relation. That is sort of indefinable bijection with fund x naught. And now, um, in, this is a quotient object. If we assume about our theory that every quotient is represented by a definable set, we can call this y x zero. And that's called elimination of imaginaries. So we lift from this set of fundamental solutions to some subset of some high power y to the L. Now, I mean, a priori, we don't really have control over this, depending on how this equivalence relation can get represented. But um, so we represent as some subset of um, some y, and then we just use this u hat in the same way to define composition on y hat. And so the, really the main, uh, the only thing that's really changed here is that um, in the more general setting, we might have to allow quotients. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, and if we allow quotients, then uh, we get the same group. And again, it's unique up to definable isomorphism, and um, it doesn't matter uh, which u or x not we bet. Yeah, so. But um, now the algebraicity of a composite becomes more of an issue, doesn't it? Ah, so you quotient if you have an yeah, alpha and a gamma. gamma. Yes. So um, in so the, the general um, notion that we're going to use is that of elimination of imaginaries, which precisely says that um, yeah. Yeah. I mean for instance if you have an a quotient of an algebraic variety, then you have a con it's definably isomorphic to a constructible set. And then we can run through the same proof because we'll have a constructible group. But then we need to, to get algebraicity, then we need to use this theorem of Ve and Hushovskis that says that, uh, yeah, that a generically presented constructible group is in fact algebraic. So there's more work that needs to be done. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. in the case where we're just looking at anything internal to the constants, we still get an algebraic group. Mm -hmm by a combination of stable embeddedness, yeah. elimination of imaginaries, and, um, and this theorem about constructible groups being uh, isomorphic to algebraic groups. We can, yeah. Couldn't could this uh, question that Ray asked be, uh, be, be solved, or quote unquote, <laughs> with, uh, by, by the internality uh, approach here again? Uh, you said, I mean, look, I mean, you, you change it, you change it by the quotient. Uh, the x would remain internal to y, right? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, so the worry here, though. And is that some induction? Hmm. Induction? On dimension? Or so something the worry the here is that works. taking the quotient yeah. take, might take you outside of the category that you mm -hmm. yeah. work in, right? I yeah. mean, quotients of varieties, for instance, are not varieties, right. but they are constructible sets. So here we're relying on the fact that taking a quotient gets us back in the same category of sets definable in Y. And that's why we need this, to stay in the same geometric category. 
So that's that's the meaning of a lineage of imaginaries is that if you have right, right. some set some a sunset some geometric category and you take its quotient, you remain in that category. Right. right. If I understand this correctly, which I don't probably, what you're basically saying is that you can define this generically yes. and then by right. That's v magic. Yeah. Then by v magic, you get an algebraic thing mm -hmm. at the end. Yeah. 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 So the, the we have this group, or we have this object y. We have to look at a quotient, constructible, but yeah. we still get a group, and it's still a group. But then, by v magic, we get an honest to god algebraic group. Yeah. yeah. And we can't use the same trick that we did in the Picard Vestio case because we already had a definable. Uh, linear representation, right. right? Definable faithful linear representation, but that doesn't cut it here because we don't a priori know how to embed it inside an algebraic group. Uh -huh. The point of the V construction is to take our constructible group, construct an associated algebraic group to embed into to complete that step of the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so there's a lot inside this step. Yeah. Um, so here, this is by elimination of imaginaries. And then, to get algebraicity, you need to do Faye. Faye style arguments. So you need those group chunks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in general. Um, yeah. And then, um, see, I guess I'm about out of time. But uh, So here we've constructed the binding groups, um, just using the model of picard bessio theory, and then doing a somewhat straightforward generalization with some added technical assumptions. But really, I think keeping the picard Bessio um, theory in mind should be sufficient to, um, to really understand binding groups in the differential context. Yeah. All right, so thank you. Thank you. So, a question, just one question. Is this tape thing going to be moved to the other room? Is what? Who's this?